The first thing I want to talk about is our concept of fitting. We, when you go out there, let's say you went out right now and you went to your local pro shop or you went down to the golf store or the golf, the box store down there, and you say I want to get fit for some clubs. What they're going to do is they're going to put you on, they're going to grab you, they may take a few measurements, and they're going to put you on a live board and they're going to measure some swing speed. That's typically what they do. And what they're doing is they're measuring you to fit you for your swing today. Okay? So however you're swinging it today, they're fitting you for that swing. It's what you call a dynamic fit. So if you're an over-the-top move or you're standing really close to the golf ball or maybe you're really flat or maybe you have a strong grip or whatever it is. I mean, whatever you're doing in your golf swing today is what they're fitting that club to you, okay? And I'll be honest with you. That's what most of the golf industry does, and that's a good fit for most people. That dynamic fit is a good fit because they want to go towards the swing they're swinging today, and maybe you okay. But this isn't what we do because we are an instruction-based company. We are a swing instruction-based company. We're a single plane swing instruction-based company. Now, you know, I think you all know that. So we expect that every single day as you work on your golf swing, you're making changes. They may be small every day, which you know, we expect. You know, you're not making big changes every day, but you're making changes to get to the ideal single plane swing. Okay, and that's what we're promoting. So we're working with you every single day trying to get you to swing it better and get you close to that perfect model, that perfect single plane swing. Well, here's the problem. If I gave you a dynamic fit today, so I got you, and let's say you swung over the top and you need to club those upright and pretty short, okay, and, and maybe a smaller grip, whatever it is. And then all of a sudden we start changing your swing. Let's say we change something tomorrow. Well, guess what? In one day that club wouldn't fit you because you've now got away from how you were swinging at it today. So what we do at Graves Golf is we call what's called a static fit. A static fit is a fitting we have set up that for your shape, for your height, your arm length, your hand size, you know, how fast you swing it, for all that, we have created a model for the perfect club to fit you for your perfect single plane swing, okay? And there's some huge advantages to that. So basically what we're doing is, based off of Moe's model and based off a of single plane model and putting it all together, okay, we know how to fit a club for you to get the proper length, the proper line angle, the proper shaft flex, the proper grip size, so that as you're making changes in your swing, it's getting closer and closer and going towards that club we're fitting you for, okay? And that's what it's all about. And the beauty of this is twofold. Here's number one, is when you have a club that's the model you're working towards, or the club is what you're working towards, it is so much easier to make swing changes, it's undescribable. And anybody out there that has done this before understands this, okay? So number one is, if you want to make swing changes, you have to have a club that fits you towards the swing changes you're going towards. If you don't, it is extremely hard to make changes. I'm not going to say impossible, I'm just going to say, it, it's close to impossible, but more than that, your swing changes will be so slow, okay? Because if your club doesn't fit towards a model you're working towards, you're working away from the piece of equipment. It doesn't make sense, okay? That's number one. Here's number two, is when we build a club, the club is built to work for your ideal single plane swing and protect your body, Okay, and that's and if, if I said anything here at all, I will tell you that the biggest thing we do and the biggest thing we look at is we're trying to create a club for you or come up with a perfect fit for you so that when you hit a ball, decent, good, even maybe sort of good, no matter how you hit it, it's protecting your body. It's protecting your wrists, your elbow, your shoulders, your neck, your back. Okay, it's protecting it. So it's funny, people always say, why do you want a perfect fit? And I say, well, obviously you want a perfect fit because it makes swing changes easier. But honestly, if you came to me and said, why do I want to get this kind of perfect fit? I'm going to say it's twofold. And number one fold is because it protects him. He's not going to get hurt swinging the club. And the second thing is now it's easier to make swing changes. Okay? Because, guys, it's interesting. If you ask any golfer who gets the club close to on plane and the club fits them perfect and they hit a shot and they hit it, they hit it decent or good, you ask them what they feel, they'll say nothing, or pureness, or most, you know, you know, beauty, or you know, the feeling of greatness. 
He doesn't feel like the club sticks in the ground or twists or turns or vibrates in the hand, okay? You really almost feel nothing when you hit it. You know, they say, some people say it feels like, you know, cutting through butter with a knife. You know, you hear stuff like that. But when you come with a perfectly fit club for you, and we, we work that through for you guys, that's what should happen. It should be fit that when you hit it, there's ease on the body. It makes it easier to hit golf balls. It makes it easier to hit it appropriately and fits that swing you're working towards. That's what we call a static fit, okay? I don't want to fit you into an over-the-top swing or something you're too close to the ball or, or grip size is too small. I don't want to do that. I want to, as an instruction-based company, get you a club that fits you perfect for the swing you're working towards. And you guys will watch swing changes occur so much faster. It's unbelievable. Folks, I've been doing this for 20 years, okay? I've been doing this for 20 years, and I've been fitting for 20 years. I'm a master fitter with a lot of companies out there, with Titleist, with Callaway, with TaylorMade. I'm a master fitter. And in fact, I'm going to bring one of my instructors up here tonight, and James Bell, who's also a master fitter. In fact, before I hired James, he fit for a living for years and years and years. And we see this all the time. We see how getting a properly fit club allows the student to make swing changes so much easier and also protect the body, okay? So that's really the discussion of a dynamic for a static versus a static fit. So with a static fit, we can take your measurements. We can take measurements from the body and we can actually show you exactly what your club should be to fit those measurements, okay? And first, so the first thing I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna show you how to fill out the form. We have a form online that you can fill out. And so there's the website. And you actually go and you click under where it says free club fitting under custom club fitting. It says free club fitting and this will pop up, okay? And, honestly, and you see on that form, the first few things in the form is your name, your first name, last name, email address. guys. I will say this now, everything we do is filed under email addresses. It's the only thing unique. Trust me, we have more than one John Smiths in the computer, okay, or, or Tim Browns. So at the email address is how it's stated. So if you send in a fitting for yourself and then one for your wife and one for your son and your daughter, please use different email addresses. If not, the most recent one overwrites the previous one, okay? So use a unique email address. Now, if you also look on this, You'll see we got um, height, we have a right versus left handed, we've got glove size, wrist to floor measurement, and then how far you hit some clubs, and then we're going to go into actually a little bit about some issues. Do you have like, is there any type of body issues, is there any type of physical limitations, and so on like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring James up right now, and he's just basically going to walk me through a fit. He's going to fit me real quickly. It'll take just a couple of minutes, just like we do if we were in person with you or you can do at home. He's going to show how we would do a perfect fit to fill out that form, okay? So, so let's, go, let's go. Right. So again, I want to introduce James Bell. James, master fitter. He's a, a professional, you know, one of our instructors. Many of you guys have probably seen James at schools. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take height. We're going to have you take your height now. It's the height, if you take your wrist to floor measurement with your shoes on, please have your height with your shoes on. If your height is with your shoes off, have your wrist to floor measurement with your shoes off. Just make it equal, okay? So usually it's not a real big difference, but I get that question a lot. So again, do them both either with shoes on or shoes off. Preferred it, with your shoes on. With your shoes on. It's, and guys, it's a ratio. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. When we start talking about the way we make the club, it's a ratio. So first thing is your height. You write down your height. So I'm five foot ten. So we write down five foot ten. The second thing we want is we want wrist to floor measurement. Okay. And so I'm going to sit. Now what you do for wrist to floor measurement is you put your feet together, just comfortably together, and you hang your arms down by your side. And what James will do is he's going to walk in with a yardstick, and we're going to measure to the crease in the wrist. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to show it on the camera. So here's the wrist. It's the lower crease between the wrist and the hand. Okay? And there's a few creases there. Go to where it just meets the hand. That's the crease we're looking at. So I'm going to sit here with my hands by my side. You better stand there because you sit. Yeah, I'm going to stand wrong. there, okay? And James goes to get the first one is? 34. 34, okay. So I got 34 on my left wrist. The floor and my right is 34 and a half. 34 and a half. Okay. So most people usually be a half inch or an inch difference. You just tie, you just put them both in there. You can put right 34, left 34 and a half. If they're equal, just put one in there. It's fine. Okay. So now I'm five foot ten with a 34 inch wrist to floor measurement. Okay. So that's the second one. The next thing we're going to look on there is we want hand size. Hand size is from that same crease in the wrist. 
where I just showed you to the tip of the middle finger. Okay, so James is going to measure that. Okay, so I'm going to look at that, and as you look at the head size, it's seven and a half, right? Seven and a half. Seven and a half, okay? Now, in that, you'll see where it says hand size. If you click on that, you'll see it actually will, a pop down will come down. If you know your glove size, you can match it up too. I wear a medium large glove, which is a seven and a half hand size, okay? So that's the next measurement we have. Now, the next thing we're going to have in there, now, one thing I'm going to back up a half step with you guys on, be very careful for me on the wrist to floor measurement, okay? Because I know James is going to bust me on this one. This is what a lot of guys will do or measurement person they'll do is, notice when I did that, I stood, just stood up straight. A lot of guys and gals, when they're doing this, they will go like this and look down. And as they look down and look at the measurement, it lowers their shoulder. Just stand straight. And if you're doing it yourself, you can actually stand straight. You can hold the yardstick and you can look at it yourself and see where it's at. You can just stand straight up and down with the yardstick. It's not that hard, okay? Now, you got your hand size. We've got the wrist and floor. We've got the height. The next thing we're going to want on there is a six iron distance and or a nine iron distance, okay? Now, if you happen to know swing speeds, which most people don't, you can type those in. Just type them in. Like if you said, I know my six iron goes 80 yards or 80 miles an hour, just write six iron, 80 miles an hour. Type it in there. Most people, 99% of people that do this don't know their swing speeds. But we can calculate their swing speeds if you put a, a yardage in there for us. We'll talk about this in a little while. So right now, this is where you play what you would normally hit. Let's say if you hit a six iron, and let's say you hit a good one, a bad one, an average one, what would be your average distance? I don't want the one that you hit the best or the one you hit the worst. Most people know their average distance for a six iron and a nine iron. If you only know one of them, that's okay. Put, it, put them in there. We are able to calculate swing speed from that. Again, I'll show you that here in a little bit. Carry so, distance. Okay, and, and yes, and it is carry distance. So let's say you hit a shot in a hard green and it bounced 30 yards. I don't care how far it went total. I want to know how far it flies, okay? I remember, I, asked, I remember one time somebody said, if you hit a nine iron and it's stuck in the ground, like it's stuck in sand, from the spot you hit to where it's stuck in the ground, how far would that be? Okay, and just your average distance. You, write, you, you, you put those in there, so we type those in. The next thing I'd like on there, we put on there, is your physical limitations. And when I, what I mean by that is, do you have things like arthritis? Do you have a bad back? Um, may, you know, anything you think that could, there's, there's a lot of them, but anything you think that could affect a fit for you, please type them in there. Sometimes I get nothing. Most of them I get nothing. Sometimes I get paragraphs. And I read them all, okay? We read them all. So put in any type of physical limitation you have that you think might affect a fit for you. It might be that, you know, um, you, I have guys that say I have, you know, an artificial hip and my right side's harder than my left. They, you guys, there's a lot in there. Go in there, type them in there under physical limitations um, or issues, and we'll, we'll analyze that, okay? Anything else that we want to talk about in the form? No, it covers it. Okay. So I'm going to have, what I'm going to do with James is James is going to walk in and out with me. I mean, so he doesn't have to stand on stage with me, but he's going to walk in and out. And I'm going to pull him in and talk about some different issues. And he actually is very interesting. James fit for, I mean, he's fit for over 20 years now. Uh -huh. You're your master fitter, am I right? For yes. over. And he's seen it all in the field. He's fit in person. He's done dynamic fits. He's done static fits. But we're in schools now. You'll see James out there at school doing a fit with you. And, you know, we have guys in the road doing fits all the time. And um, we get a lot of the common questions, but also we'll show you some uniqueness tonight as we go through this. Like if you have an improper line, what it can actually do. If you have an improper shaft flex, what it can do. Things like that. Okay. We'll play. What's that? We'll play. Okay, we'll play. All right. All right. So that's how you fill out the form. Now, if you're doing that at home, you fill out the form, you hit submit, I get it. When I get it, you, within 24 to 48 hours, I will analyze that and I will send you back your fittings. And then I'll, when your fittings are going in, to include length of the club, line goal of the club, shaft flex of the club, it's all recommended fittings, grip size of the club, set makeup of the club, loft of your driver, length of your driver, it'll have all that in there. And then you will have a section of the body even of recommended clubs you want to look at, okay? It comes, as, it, if you print it out, it's about two to three pages. I will actually send you that back with those within 24 to 48 hours to give you our recommendations, okay? And then I will actually typically send you a second email that will have our specials on there. And I mainly do that because then if you want to personally contact me through private email and I'm sending it to you, you 
can respond to that. We can talk about clubs or more about fit or if you want to change your clubs at home, what you should be doing. We can talk about that then, okay? So you should get at least two emails back from me about that fit, okay, when you submit that form.